Hi, YouTube. Remember, Olivia is the best. <laughs> Olivia is the best, guys. I'm glad you guys remember that. So today, we are making a YouTube video, and it's one that was highly requested on the back of my previous video. My previous video was Termina Weapon Tier List. This one is going to be Termina Skills Tier List, and it's quite a bit bigger than weapons. So we're going to be doing this today. And there's like, there is 90, sorry, there's, no, there's even more, there's 90 skills in the game. All right, let's just get started. So we'll start with Abella. I'll just go through the list. It's all in like alphabetical order. So we have Abella, then we have Olmir, then August, then Kalagura, then Dan, etc. So, oh yeah, I just want to say beforehand, um, I'm not going to be doing it based on how difficult certain abilities are to get. It, almost every single ability, depending on how you play, you can get them really early. All right, short circuit, C. C tier for sure. It opens up certain doors, but when you play as a Bella, it had a chance to fry the lock and not open it. Just bizarre that it, that it has that. It can open up shortcuts, but all the shortcuts it can open up requires a key as well. The most things it's used for is opening up stuff to get extra junk for crafting. Okay, so trap craft, dog shit. Utterly dog shit. <laughs> you can only craft bear traps and uh, explosive traps. Explosive traps are fucking worthless. They deal damage to the enemy. And that's it. Bear traps are useful. They can drop from the regular item pool. So you're almost guaranteed to get a couple anyway. And you only need a couple. Uh, weapon craft. Cracked. Weapon craft is, it's really good. Um, I think I might put it on a high A tier. It gives you meat grinder, which is S tier weapon easy. But the other weapons uh, range from okay to kind of shit. Wrench toss, uh, easy S tier. It loses a bit of effectiveness towards late game, but early to mid game, awesome ability, just fantastic. It, it cleans up early game and it's still very useful mid game. Um, Blood Sword, it's okay. You know, that's, that's really all you can say about it, it's okay. Inverse Crown of Thorns, S tier, easy S tier. Look, I'm not gonna spoil what this, what this ability does, uh, but I highly recommend it. So get it, as soon as you get it, just use it straight away and you'll see how amazing it is, right? This one and Potentious Combustion and Inverse Crown of Thorns, two S tier abilities. Make sure you get them as soon as possible and use them, okay? So now we are up to the August abilities here. Bloodlust, <laughs> it's pretty shit. <laughs> He's, he might actually, he might honestly have the worst set of abilities in the game. Bloodlust, the way it works is, it means that you can't target things and you just attack randomly with your weapon and you deal extra damage, but it's like, why would you ever use that? Devourer is pretty awful. It was bad in Fear and Hunger 1. It's bad in this too. The situations where you'll run out of food in Termina is super low. There's so much food in Termina. Uh, Sisui, I've tried using this before. And um, again, it's one of those things where it's like, uh, you have to spend a turn to not die that turn. So it's only ever useful if you've got double moves. And then it's like, okay, I guess. I guess I'll put this one in, in C, I suppose. Probably above short circuit. It's okay. Um, Warcry is sort of like a reverse pheromones. It means the enemy will target the person that uses it, and that's okay. Um, explosives is, I'm gonna put it on B tier because I've been able to use it once because <laughs> getting gunpowder is the, I think, I believe it's the rarest item you can get from tool shelves. If you have steel, you can get gunpowder from certain enemies, so there are ways to build around it. You know, I might put it on A then. I would like this to get buffed just a little bit though, to make it a little bit more useful and also make trap craft more useful. If you have explosives, then booby traps should also have a chance to instantly kill the enemy that triggers it. I thought explosives would blow the rocks in the white bunker to the right. Oh, that would be interesting. Yeah, add, add more options like that. That'd be cool. Intimidate, I've tried using it multiple times. So this is, so intimidate is a conversation skill. When you talk to somebody in combat, you have the option, you often have the option to intimidate them and that can, sometimes it debuffs enemies and sometimes if they get mad, they, it buffs them. Killing intent, uh, useless. Um, yeah, just useless. Goodbye. This one makes it so that certain enemies will try to, well, they'll run away from you and they won't try to attack you. It's, it's small enemies. So I believe it's definitely cherubs and the fecal hounds. I think it's villagers. I might be wrong. Um, steel is pretty good. The only issue with it is that it takes a turn. So you, certain enemies, you're just going to take damage. But the stuff you get from it ranges from useful to really fucking good. Like you can get guaranteed gunpowder from enemies that have guns. Analyze, cracked. Analyze is amazing. Analyze is too strong and I legitimately think it needs a little bit of a nerf. <laughs> right now, what it does, it exposes, if, if you can, if the enemy dies from getting hit in the head, it exposes their head. So you can two turn a lot of enemies with this, including bosses. So Magna Medical is one of Dan's ultimate abilities as well. If a teammate dies in a fight, 
you can use Magna Medical and you sacrifice one of your limbs and it will resurrect your teammate from the dead only if you use it in, in the fight right after they've died, right? Okay, so these two are sort of together. Medicinal and Organ Harvest are sort of, they come together. Organ Harvest lets you, when you kill an enemy, you can harvest one of their organs and it's like eyes, liver, kidneys, a, a couple of different things. With Medicinal, you can use organs to cure status effects. It's one of the only ways to cure blind in the game. Um, so it's very useful if you get it early and then you just pick up an eye. And so in, in case you're gonna be fighting someone who, who has a chance to blind you. I, I'm gonna put these on B, I reckon. So, Precision Stance, um, dog shit. <laughs> dog shit, just absolute dog shit. Uh, increases accuracy. The only, so it's very rare that you miss in, in this game. There's no, I don't think there's any weapons that have a lower accuracy. In the first game, there are a couple that lowered your accuracy. But in Termina, I don't think any do. The only thing, the only time accuracy, you can still miss attacks, but it's very, very rare. The only time accuracy, you would think it matters is when you are trying to attack the head straight up. But the way the code works, the head, the, the chance to hit the head is a completely separate check from your own accuracy. So you can have 3000% accuracy, but you can still miss the head because it's got a completely separate check. All the things that increase your accuracy are just useless in term. It's absolutely useless. Diagnosis is, it's okay. When you kill an enemy, you can sort of diagnose their body and see, get clues for how to beat them in the future. I feel like it could do something a little more because once you've already sort of played through once, you, you sort of never need to do it again. Okay, so now we've got God of Fear and Hunger abilities here. And these are all generally pretty good. Flesh Puppetry is a nice dot. It does use up a bit of mind each turn and you can't control what the Flesh Puppets actually attack. So on some bosses, it's not amazing, but it's it's okay. It deals, it deals nice damage over turn. I'm gonna put it in, I'm gonna put it in B tier. Mastery over Vermin, cracked, absolutely cracked. Like it's 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 an amazing ability. Um, I would put it here. I'd put it here. Mastery over Vermin can is useful all the way up to very final boss in in endings uh, A and B because it 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 sort of it sort of tails off in the final fights because it doesn't do much damage. But the the AOE stun is just fucking ridiculous, just ridiculous. An AOE stun. I'm surprised this hasn't been nerfed. I have to stop myself from using it because it's so good. I mean, it does cost 35 mind, right? So it's it's expensive, right? Wait, sorry. Mischief of, mis mischief of rats, not mastery over vermin. <laughs> Whoops. So mischief of rats is the one with the stun. Mastery of vermin lets you talk to vermin. You'd think this one is just a lore ability, but there's a bunch of vermin that give you free items. Plus there's a whole little, little quest line that you can get from this. Um, okay, so rot, very good because it weakens the enemy um changes their sprite see all the ones so all the ones i'm putting in s tier are just amazing just game defining spells i don't think rot is that good I, it's good but i don't think it's like s tier good right so I, i'm i never i've never felt like i need to get right like all of these ones i've been like i need to get this spell i need it but this one is like have i have i felt that i don't know high a tier okay blob excellent excellent ability very solid Base, the bread and butter of any magic build is 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 black orb, um, shoots out damage. Black smog, very good, very good ability because it's one of the few uh, ones you can get that have a very high chance to blind. So very good. You can spice it to make it fucking crazy, um, and has a chance to poison too. So very good. Like like glass on command, and glass is one of the best consumables in the game. So um, we love we love blindness here. So that's that's gonna be high AT. I'm gonna put that above black orb. Blood Golem, again, another amazing ability. When you're doing a solo run, Blood Golem is indispensable. First Spice Blood Golem means you instantly get a party member and then you use Pheromones first turn and then the enemy just ignores you and goes for your Blood Golem with 200 HP. So fantastic, fantastic spell. I'm going to put it here. Just above Rot, I reckon. Yep. Hurting. See, I love Hurting. It's not one of the better spells, right? But Black Orb is just a better version of, of Hurting, right? I love the name. The name cracks me up. I love... I love it when games have weird names like this. Um, I'm gonna have to put it below just because it's just when we're, we're just when we're talking about abilities and, and and mechanics. I have to put it below. Necromancy, very good. It's it's S T I I reckon it's oh high A tier. I think it's but it's sort of mandatory for a solo run. Your ghouls are a lot weaker now. You can't raise skeletons, and the ghouls are just so much weaker than in one. But it is it is still really good. But I think it's just not quite S tier. Not quite. 
I think it's just, I think it's very high A. Um, okay, so Master, Master Chief from the hit series Halo. It is reliant on getting the other books. So what this one does is when you have the recipes for uh, goulash, meat pie, vegetable pie, and mushroom stew, it gives you the improved version of those recipes. The improved versions give you different buffs. Evasion buffs and speed buffs are insane in this game. So MasterChef is very good, but the big downside it is it relies on you already having those books. I would like it to give you like a free recipe. So like, I don't know, a brand new recipe that gives you like a, a minor stat buff. That's still like nice. So you have something from it for free because taking a whole ability and then not being able to use it because you don't get books is a bit, you know, it's like, <laughs> so for that reason, I'm going to put it in, I'm going to put it uh, here, I think, melee proficiency. You know, pe people are saying that it helps you hit the head, but I don't know. I don't, I really don't know. I'm, I'm going to put, I'm going to put them in DT. I don't like them. I just don't like them. Same with gun proficiency. Don't like it. And bare fisted. Don't like it. Um, slow metabolism. I like this one. You, you require less food. So it's a, it's a pretty useful skill. The, the downside again is food is so common. What it, the, the thing that it does is good. It's just that food is so common that it's not useful whatsoever. So for, for that reason, I'm going to have to put it in C. I'm going to put it above diagnosis because I, I, I have found times where I, uh, where I was like, I would like to eat less food. Diplomacy is S tier. What diplomacy does is when, when battle starts, you instantly talk to the enemy for free. And when you combo that with persuade or intimidation, it's amazing. Some enemies, you can, you can stop them from attacking you just instantly. Bobbies, you can get them. You can kill them on turn one when you do this. Escape plan. It still has a noticeable fail rate, as I found out during my Masso mode runs yesterday. <laughs> but it does help. I'm just going to put it in B tier, to be honest, because it's like, I still I still fail a lot from escaping while using it. Lock picking, very good, although it sort of falls off once you reach the city, because there's actually not many locked doors in the city for some weird reason. So it's very good early game. Tapers off hard in mid game, and there's no point in late game, because it's, it's obviously for exploration. High B tier. High B tier. I would like more lock doors. Persuade, excellent. Fantastic ability. There's a lot of enemies Persuade is really good on. And the enemies that it's good on, it's, it's usually really good on. Like you can, you can, if, if you combo this with Diplomacy, you can kill Bobby's first turn without taking any damage. High A tier, I think. Because it's very good, but I don't think it's like mandatory. We're up to Levi's skills now. With his skills, basically what they do is they improve each tier of weapon and basically bump it up a tier. So Gunslinger, that's a pistol skill. Basically, it turns pistols into a rifle. And when you use a pistol, it shoots off enemy limbs like a rifle. If you're using guns a lot, there's no, there's no real downside to getting them. I'm tempted to put Gunslinger in A tier because shooting off limbs is such a big deal. I'm legit going to put it here because rifles have carried me so much through the game because of that ability. And to the ability to turn a pistol into a rifle is insane. Marksmanship, you can sometimes instantly kill an enemy with a rifle. It's not, it's, not as, it's not as big a deal as turning a pistol into a rifle and shooting off limbs. So it's good, but not amazing. And Executioner, so what Executioner does is when, when an enemy is stunned on the field, then you can just instantly kill them. So there's a couple of things that stun enemies. One of them is you shoot them with a shotgun in the first place and then they get stunned. It basically means that you will never take more than two shots to kill an enemy on the field with a shotgun, right? So it means that you delete every enemy except bosses with this. The only issue is that shotguns usually have limited ammo, but it's, it's very good. I might put that just below Gunslinger. Okay, Moth Swarms. Okay, so these two here, Moth Swarm and Red Arc. You get these when you beat ending A, the logic ending. Moth Swarm is okay. It's a nice bit of leeching damage. I think it might be the only leeching attack in the game now that I think about it. It felt pretty underpowered to me when I used it. So I'm just going to put it on B tier. Yeah, probably just here. Red Arc very good. Very strong. A shitload of damage. For a magic build, Red Arc is just nuts. I might put it just below Mischief, I think. Because it is, it, is a, is it, it is a great nuke, isn't it? Okay, Adrenaline Rush, fantastic. Boosted regular attack damage as, a, as the match goes on. So it's free, it's free damage, basically. The only downside is you don't get, um, you don't get a cool dance when you do it. So, so I would probably put it here, I think. Here, yeah. Bob and Weave, it's very RNG dependent. And RNGs does not favor me whatsoever. Um, <laughs> every time I've used it, it just hasn't worked. And I don't know if it's bugged or it's just, it's just really bad RNG. Um, so I feel like I can't comment on Bob and Weave whatsoever because it just doesn't work for me. Um, I'm going to put it in C tier for that reason. But other people say it works well. So I don't know. <laughs>
<laughs> Counter stance. It's okay. When you get when you get attacked, you uh you deal damage back. You don't want to be attacked though. So it's 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 got the same issue in a lot of games have some similar stuff like this. It's like you don't want to get attacked in the first place. But if you combo this with perfect guard, then you can you're basically doing free damage. Um, but it does take a couple of turns to set up, which is the issue. So it's okay. You know, chip damage is always good, isn't it? Put it here. Now I'm gonna bump blood sword up a little bit, I think. Fast dance, that's uh free double turns, which is very good. Double turns is is, is fantastic. But again, the, the downside is it takes a turn to get going. So you're probably going to eat a little damage depending on the fight. And you, and there's ways to get double turns for free that aren't that hard to set up as you go through the game. So it definitely tails off as the game goes on. But it's a good alternative. So I'm definitely going to put this in A tier. Um, Probably here, actually. Yeah, I reckon that's a good spot. Perfect guard. Excellent. It just makes your guard way better. And you're going to be guarding a lot throughout the game. So it's pretty good to pick this up as soon as you can. I might put this above Adrenaline Rush, actually, because it's just so, so useful to have. It's not like a game changer, but it just makes your guard better. And you're going to be guarding a lot anyway, so it's like, it's it's a no-brainer, really. Okay, now we're up to Marinara, our good friend Marinara. And let's start with, what's her first ability? Engrave. Engrave is pretty awesome. So what Engrave does is it lets you carve a permanent sigil on a character's face. And you can carve it on any recruitable character's face, I believe. The only downside is to the different engravings that you get is that some of them are just kind of useless. So what is it? Uh, you get magic protection, uh, raises damage, and raises magic damage and physical protection. They're all kind of useless. The only two that are really useful are rares, which raises mind capacity, and the god of fear and hungers, which raises agility. That being said, those are really good. So you've got two really, really good ones and like four, four ones that are pretty useless. So I'm going to put it on low S tier for that. I would like the useless ones buffed a little bit, just so there's actually a real choice when it comes to, to getting these, these things. So advanced occultism and greater occultism. So what these do is advanced occultism gives you a rev point when you start the battle. And greater occultism makes you start the battle with two rev points. Now, these are very good because it means that you can start casting spells a lot faster. These are two spells that are just general improvements. So if you have the opportunity to get them, just get them because you're never going to, at the very least, even if you're, even if you're not using magic, you can start the, start the battle and deal a little bit more damage and maybe finish it in the first turn. So these are very good. Advanced occultism is at least A. Um, probably here. And greater occultism is a lot better. Probably here, I reckon. Warding Sigil, this means an enemy can't walk over a Warding Sigil, which can be used to, to block off enemy paths. It's it's neat. Not super useful, but it does exactly what it says it does. Um, and it's not bad, but it could be a little bit more useful, I think. Yeah, I'd probably put it here. I'd probably put it here. It's an interesting ability. Okay, now we're going on to everybody's favorite girl, best girl in the game, Olivia. So Advanced Botanism teaches you the recipes for Condensed Blue and Condensed Green and Condensed Lavender. Condensed Blue and Condensed Lavender, the two best healing items in the game because they heal 125 health and 125 mind, respectively. That being said, you never need that much healing. <laughs> And you definitely don't need condensed green. Green, all the green herb recipes are just useless. Um, never, never craft anything with a green herb. You don't need it. I'm going to put it in A tier because they are fantastic healing, but you can usually squeeze out a little more for less. So I'm going to put it on low A tier for that reason. So I might bump it up a little bit actually because, because it gives you, uh, mixed lavender is, is pretty good. Probably here. Poison tip. I really like it. What Poison Tip does is your weapon gets a buff where when you hit an enemy, it has a chance to poison them. Dots in Fear and Hunger are really good. Um, and it's very cheap. The only downside is, of course, it takes a turn, uh, but I really like it. I think I think the only downside is it's really good against bosses, but Olivia already has skills that are fantastic against bosses too. So it's not a huge deal. It's not as big a deal as you might think it is, but it is still really good for the free damage. So I'm going to put it here above Fast Dance, I think. Undergrowth Awareness lets you pick up extra plants so it lets you it lets you pick up blue blue herb roots which no one which you can't do without that but you pick up nettle and poison hemlock and what's the last one dagger wild dagger um so that alone is pretty good getting the deep blue roots and dagger is is really good just by itself because they're they're fantastic healing items but the hemlock and the nettle are good you need an extra ability you need toxicology to use them but they're really good as well um, so I'm going to put this in here and toxicology to add on from that 
you can make uh, condensed nettle and condensed hemlock. Condensed nettle adds a new status effect called irritation, and condensed hemlock is one of the strongest dots in the game. It's ridiculous. Toxicology alone is is S tier for that reason. The only downside is it, requ it basically requires undergrowth awareness and going and farming this stuff. So if you get pinecone pig, pinecone pig can randomly pick up the stuff you need for this, which is pretty cool, but you can't count on that. So <laughs> Osar's stuff is all really good, right? Dance macabre, S tier, straight up, top of S tier. Just it's un unquestionable. Do I even have to explain why? Not only does it buff your magic as the fight goes on, it gives you the coolest animation in the game, the dance, right? So we've got meditation and greater meditation. So what this one does is when you guard, you get you get a rev point and then greater meditation, you get two. So whenever you guard, it instantly fills up your rev points with, with greater meditation. Greater meditation means you can just be absolutely shitting out damage with, with max rev. The only downside is, of course, you have to take a turn to, to do it, to guard, to do it, but <laughs> when you can when every other turn you can hit twice anyway so it's, it sort of sort of evens out but i will probably put it in a high a tier i think and meditation is probably probably here i think yeah spice forge s tier easy s tier um so if you don't know how spice forge works what it does is when you use it it opens up a menu it shows all of the spells that you can spice not every spell can be spiced but most can you have three options so you can make one spell hit twice you can make one spell cast for free at the very start and you can make one spell cost a lot less right so and you know what i'm just going to put this it makes everything better and if you're doing a magic build you just need you need spice forge just straight up you need it okay so now up to path path only has three abilities i imagine he'll get one more when it becomes playable bury the trauma means that as you're walking around your mind ticks down slower it's not bad a tier because it's just useful for your mind to tick down slower, especially in magic builds. The current issue is you can't get it until the very end of the game right now. You can't get it until you reach the tower. And that's only if you reach the tower on day one morning. So it's like, it's kind of useless. Unless you're Karen, you can get it a lot earlier as Karen because there's a unique scene with Karen pretty early on. On guard, fantastic. It gives you a free uh, melee attack at the start of each combat if you use on guard as you, as you start the fight. I'm going to put it here. Auto charge. So auto charge, when you use it, all of your allies will instantly attack the thing that you target. So it's pretty good when you've got ghouls. Uh, they'll attack a direct target, which I don't usually do. So it can be useful if you're going a party, a full party. But if you're not worrying about that, then it's not a huge deal. But it's okay. It's okay. I'm going to put it on low A tier, I think. Okay, now we're up to rare. So these are all the abilities you get from the god rare, right? Golden Gates is a fun way to navigate the map, actually. So when you have Golden Gates, when you enter rare's realm, you will always, each one has a golden gate there. And if you have this ability there open, and it lets you teleport between each of the different rare realms around the map. I'm going to put a low A tier, pretty low A tier, I think. Lunar Meteorite is a rare spell you get from beating the game. And it's just a, a single target attack. You know what, I'm going to put that in A tier as well. It is a bit expensive, so I'll probably put this under Black Orb, I think. Yeah. And Lunar Storm is the same thing, but it attacks everything at the same time. It is very expensive, but it deals a, cr a shitload of damage. I'm going to put this... Yeah. Mind Read is a fun lore one, because it gives a lot of different context, but the, it only does lore stuff only like there's nothing else right i think it would be cool if it did something else like maybe maybe if it gave you like a small buff to hitting the head or something like that or give you it gives you like a uh, a passive dodge boost because you're your mind reading right and so you can you can tell when the enemy's going to attack something like that reveal aura is useful when you don't know so what reveal aura does is um on the map when a, an, an enemy contestant has transformed into a moon scorch version it reveals their location on the map this is one of those those skills that's absolutely useless once you know where everything is in, in the game so after a couple of playthroughs you'll just never need it but it is useful at what it does so it could be a lot better though, because it's nice to know where they are when they're transformed. But right now, it's just a nightmare to find where everybody is in the game when they're not when they're not transformed. So it ends up feeling like the game is really empty. It feels like the game is really empty when you're running around because all of the the interactions with other contestants are just spread out over three days, and you have no idea where they are or when they are. So reveal aura being buffed to actually show you where they are when they're not transformed, I think, would be a very good choice. And it used to be that way because you can see in an early in an early video, it used to do that but it was changed to just be Moonscorch. Okay, so now we're up to uh, Samurai skills. Our girl Samurai, um, we've got Blood Sacrifice. And what Blood Sacrifice does is if there's a Grogoros Sigil, you can use Blood Sacrifice to deal a whole bunch of damage to yourself and you get extra Grogoroth affinity. Pretty useful because 
there's limited limited old god sigils to be able to draw so you have to make use of what you've got i'm gonna put it in a tier just low a tier because it by itself isn't that useful but it's just really good at unlocking other stuff right same with masturbation exactly the same thing masturbation does have the excellent animations though so we're gonna put this in high a tier Okay, so now we have various stat increases. A bunch of gods and Tanaka and some other people have like stat increases. I'm going to screenshot every single one because there's no point, right? So agility plus one is very, very good. So if you get two agility increases plus small things amulet, then you are guaranteed two turns in almost every single fight in the game. Plus it increases your dodge chance and plus it just increases your speed in general. So agility, very, very, very good. The rest of these are okay. Attack is... um uh b i guess defense uh junk magic attack uh b magic defense junk um <laughs> the defense stats don't seem to be super strong to be honest and i remember someone seeing someone do the math and like attack plus one and magic attack plus one equals like four extra damage on an attack which is just it's pretty i'm gonna i'm gonna bump it right down actually they, they're kind of junk they, they need to be fixed somehow I don't, I don't know how you'd fix it but they need to do something a bit better <laughs> Um, oh, mind capacity plus 25 is really nice. If you're going a magic build, it's almost not not definitely mandatory, but very nice. Let's let's smash these last ones out. Longinus, pretty good. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Better than uh, Bloodsword for sure. Healing Whispers, insane. Uh, uh, yep, Healing Whispers is fucking insane. Loving Whispers, very good. High A tier, I'm going to say. Yeah, here. Um, what do we got? Brain Flower, kind of shit. Heart flower kind of shit. Uh, pheromones, really good. When you, on, on certain builds, very, very good. Yeah. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Chains of Torment, very good, but tough to get. Um, I'm going to put that high A tier. It deals insane damage, but you've got to, you've got to do a, a special boss fight to get it just for that fight. So you sort of have to, <laughs> have to really work for it. Combustion, very good when comboed with Scorched Earth because it's got the burn as well. Uh, photosynthesis okay see photosynthesis heals you when you're outside during the daytime so super limited uh you know i'm gonna bump that right down actually yeah yeah pyromancy trick it's okay a little bit of fire damage it's, you know it's not meant to be an amazing ability it's just a little bit of fire damage really so roots that reap fucking insane roots that reap is mandatory on magic builds so straight up just straight up mandatory on magic builds is it the only real aoe damaging spell i think it is double roots that reap just melts logic like it, it's insane against logic um that carried me the entire entire time during that fight scorched earth pretty cool i really like scorched earth but it relies on you just doing a pyromancy build and some fights it won't let you use it won't let you use scorched earth during logic which is bizarre but i really like it if, if you do if you are going a pyromancy build then it's it's pretty good i'm gonna put it above combustion yep yeah, we made it through. We made it through. That went for way longer than I thought it would. <laughs> so what do you reckon, guys? Yeah, what do, what do you guys... Is there anything Is there anything you guys would change about this? Because oh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it stands right now. All 90 abilities in the game. <laughs> well, right, right, right. We've got to, we've got to do the, the YouTube outro, don't we? So remember to like, favorite, and subscribe. And remember that memberships are open. And any support from the channel goes straight back in to working on the channel if you want more content like this. So I'll catch you guys next time. There we go. How's that? Is that good? Is that a good ending? Make sure to come say hi next time I'm streaming. <laughs> Hurting says Henrik giving you expired Taco Bell. Well, that's basically what he does, isn't it? <laughs> Need more enemies that inflict blind? No, I don't think we do. <laughs> Inverse crown S tier. I can't agree more. <laughs>